Hello, 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 and welcome back to What, what, what the Deaf, Deaf podcast. So we kind of left you hanging last episode with a very juicy, curious question. Are you concerned about making any noise while having sex? Um, now the answer is no. If I'm worried about the noises that I make, then obviously the sex is not good. Right. <laughs> and my head's in a completely different world, so I'm not too concerned about the noise. But there's another thing that we worry about regarding to noise is that we make while on a date with a guy. Oh, Don't you want to tell your story? Uh, you had to bring that up. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Uh, yes. Okay. I ran into my ex at a bar and Carly was there. And we were flirting to the point where we decided, so let's go back to my place. And we got in his car and uh oh, I realized I did not have my house keys. And I was like panicking and I wasn't sure what to do. But then I was like, oh, my parents have an extra key. So I made him drive me to my parents' house and it was like one o'clock in the morning and both my parents were asleep. And I was able to kind of sneak in. But again, I'm not sure what the noise, if it was loud or not, but I took the risk. I snuck in in the dark and found my keys. And I was like, okay, let's go. Let's go, go, go. And we drove away to my house and the rest is history. But I woke up the next morning and I had to referee a volleyball game at like seven in the morning. And I was like, not a happy girl, but hey, it was worth it. And that same night, I was in a guy's house who served me a fancy breakfast, and I asked the guy if he could drop me off where Sarah was refing her volleyball game while she was suffering and in pain. <laughs> I literally had to FaceTime her during my game at a not a pretty angle, but I was like, where are you? Are you here yet? And then I blew my whistle to start the game. <laughs> She had a fancy shower. She ate breakfast. A nice car ride. Uh, yeah, a fancy car. And I was like, I look awful. But it was a good time. Good time. Oh, yeah. It was a fun time. Memories. <laughs> yes. So do you have any good or horrific dating experiences? Uh, where do I begin? <laughs> do the worst first. Oh, the worst first. Okay. So I will start with the worst because it always gets better from there. I did date a guy in college, a hearing guy, who was tall and handsome. So I was like, okay, yes, let's go on a date. <sighs> I learned a lot on that date. First of all, we decided to go to In-N-Out, which is a fun, good, easy restaurant. We went into In-N-Out and he said, I drove. So that means you're going to pay, right? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh... Wait, no, no, don't get me wrong. Like, I will offer to pay regardless. But the fact that he told me to pay for him because he drove, I was like, okay, strike one. Good to know. Put it in the back of my mind. So then we got our food, sat down, and we started chatting and eating. And then he finished first and decided to get up. And he was like, are you ready to leave? And I, I, I was like, uh. And <laughs> when it comes to food and Sarah, I might add, you don't mess with no. her. You did not mess with me and my food. So I was like, uh, he literally wanted to leave and I had French fries left over. And I looked at him and I was like, no, sit down. We're not done. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. And sat back down. And I was like, okay, strike two. <sighs> and then we finished eating finally. And we were going to go to Magic Mountain Roller Coaster Amusement Park. And I got on his motorcycle. Ooh, a motorcycle. Yeah. And I'd never been on a motorcycle. And it was summertime and I was wearing shorts and flip flops. So for a motorcycle. And I didn't realize about the heat exhaust on the side of the motorcycle. So when I hopped on the back and squeezed my legs together and I screamed in my head, not out loud because I didn't want him to notice that I was burned myself. So I stayed quiet and suffered through until we arrived to Magic Mountain. And I looked at my leg and I had a huge welt burn on my leg. Oh, and he looked down on my leg and I was like, well, instead of going on to a roller coaster, we decided to go to first aid and wrap up my leg. And I was like, Ugh. the rest of the date, you already know how that went after that. It, we're not together anymore. 
just was an interesting time with him. You poor thing. I know. It, ugh. But it was a good story. But I want to hear your stories. Your good, your bad, your awful stories. My worst dating experience would have to be in college. Remember when you and I decided to download Tinder? That was like a popular app during that time. And we both looked at each other and said, hey, we're single. We live in a big city. We were in Washington, D.C. Why don't we just download it and have some fun with it? So at that point, that was when I realized how mixed I was about needing to notify the person if I was deaf or not. Leading up until then, if I met somebody in person, clearly they can identify right then and there that I'm deaf. But on Tinder, when's the right time or how? I don't put it on my profile that I'm deaf. Otherwise, they would just swipe right through. So it became a mind game for us. And I was like, hey, Sarah, do I tell him now? Or when's the right time to tell him? And so we both kind of looked at each other. I matched with a guy. Our conversations were going so well. And Sarah and I looked at each other and said, you know what? Yeah, let's not tell him. I'm just not going to say anything until the date itself. So sure enough, I showed up to the date early. Of course, I wanted to make sure that I got a good seat and I had my drink ready to go before he arrived. He arrived and I saw him approaching the table and instantly he just started talking. So I kind of stopped him with my gestures and I pointed out my ears and said I was deaf and he just stood there and stared at me like a deer in headlights. And I just waited a little bit and he turned around and walked right out of the restaurant. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we're just (laughs) not meant to be. So I texted Sarah and said, hey, do you want to come be my date? And she showed up and she stayed. So it was the best date ever. And we ate amazing food and you let me finish. Yes. Yes, of course. (laughs) So thanks for that. (laughs) And I paid. I appreciate that. But yeah, like, wow, that was a point where I realized online dating was a test on my thought process. How do I reveal that I'm deaf? And I shouldn't have to feel taken back, but I actually did because maybe we had a really good connection and conversation. And I have to think, is he going to drop that just because I told him I'm deaf? Or some will actually say, oh, cool, that's okay. And I'm like, Well, I didn't ask for your permission if it was okay or not that I was deaf, but thanks, I guess. (laughs) You know, so it's just interesting to play with my mind a little bit with that. Online dating, especially in today's world, it's so interesting because everything is based on a picture. That's all. And a minimal bio that you decide what goes on there. And it's funny because I matched with one guy and I told him I was deaf. And he said, well, you didn't tell me you're deaf. And I said well, you didn't tell me your hearing. Right. It's the same thing. Like, why do we have to reveal it? Or is it the same thing with me having a crooked smile? Like sometimes in a picture, you can tell I have one. Sometimes you don't. And I don't want to give false hope. But again, this is who I am. And I don't want to unpack my whole life story and how everything happened to me or what happened. I shouldn't have to explain myself before we even have a connection. Exactly. Like, I would appreciate it if they would let me know if they're shorter than me, but I don't. I give them an opportunity. (laughs) And how many times do I show up and I'm like, oh, the guy's shorter than me. But hey, what if his personality is amazing or beautiful? Like if you don't have to explain yourself, then I shouldn't have to either. So it's just interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. And I did match with a really amazing guy on Tinder. It was a rare thing that happened, but we just hit it off. And he knew that I was deaf and we were talking. And he had some good questions and he was really sweet and we connected really well. So we decided to go ahead and go for a date at a coffee shop. I sat down and I arrived first, of course, because I wanted to make sure I was in the right spot. And then I saw him walking towards me and then he started dancing. So I was like, I can breathe. And he was goofy and he opened up and we sat down to have a good conversation. He even brought a notebook just in case because you never know. And at the end of that date, He even asked me, do you want to meet again for a second date? And I said, okay, let's meet for a second date. And then the end of that date, he uh, did a smooth move because he asked me, so how do you sign kiss? And I was like, okay, I'll show you the sign. And then he signed, will you kiss me? And I was like, oh, okay, good point for you. Good job. Wait, wait, wait. The listeners have to know. Is he a good kisser? 
I don't kiss and tell. Okay, you cannot do that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine, fine. I'm an open book. We're family. It's good. Yes, he was a good kisser. He was also very sweet. And the rest, we had a really, we dated for a while, but then he moved to China. So, but yeah. So, speaking of moving to China, I've noticed too on Tinder, I match better with guys who have a traveling background. I love traveling personally. And so I noticed that people who travel out of the country, they seem to be more open-minded with communicating in other languages. And that's key for me. I feel more connected and I interact better because they don't see me as disabled or different. I just speak another language and they have a passion to travel anyways. So I have that skill embedded in me of being able to converse with people who speak a different language compared to a guy who doesn't travel and our conversations don't flow and it's, we're very limited with our conversations and they truly do see me as a different person and I can sense it. So it's just really interesting. It's also interesting too, because online versus real life, I noticed when we go out to a bar or something and a lot of guys who come up to us are the ones who gesture with us, who want to right. be open with us and just have fun with us and learn something new. Sometimes we will get those guys who will be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry you're deaf. <laughs> we have that quite often. Yeah. Far too often. And do you remember that night that you and I had gone to that San Diego bar? And gosh, there's this guy who was just fascinated with us, with our signing. And with drinking, you can only imagine what goes on in their head. So he just wouldn't stop bothering us. And we got to a point where we were just like, okay, you know, enough is enough. And we just want to enjoy our night and interact with each other. This other guy had noticed it right away. He could read us and read our frustrations. And he approached this guy and asked him to leave and told him to leave us alone and have our, our girl time. And so he finally left. And, you know, the other guy came back to us and interacted with us for a brief moment. And then he left us alone. He was really nice. And of course, we did get his phone number. And I was a great wing woman. And I was like, go get him. Go get him. <laughs> <laughs> you were. And then the next day, he actually texted me and said that he wanted to go out for coffee. And right away, that won me over because generally people will say, hey, let's go out for a drink. And drinking can lead to other things. And the fact that he had already met me, he's already identified that I'm deaf and still felt confident enough to ask me to go out for coffee, which means he wants to get to know me more as a person. And I was like, you know what? I'm taking advantage of that. And the date went so well. It was amazing. He was such a nice guy. And I mean, even though I didn't last, you know, we went our separate ways, but still, I still think about that. And I said, you know what, there are really good, honest, authentic guys out there who want to get to know me as Carly and not just because I'm deaf or just reject me. And I noticed something too. Both of our good stories start with coffee. Yeah. So for you listeners want to take us out, let's go for coffee or hiking or something fun like that. Something fun other than going out to a bar and drinking. <laughs> and I think that's enough of our dating stories for now. I think the listeners submitted some questions related with dating. Don't forget anytime you want to submit your questions, email us, and we would really love to hear from you guys. So this question, I can't even tell you how many times I've gotten asked this question. Um, when I go to colleges and give presentations or just in general, they always ask me the same question. And this is from Amy from Kansas. What about dating in a hearing world like this? And do you have a preference of dating a hearing guy or a deaf guy? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Thank you, Amy, for your submission. Really, for me, it's not about whether they're deaf or hearing. It's about the connection I have with them. If they happen to be deaf, great. If they happen to be hearing, great. It doesn't matter to me. The important thing is that connection and that communication. And, well, the biggest thing for me is if I date a hearing guy, they have to learn sign language. And it's important for me to be able to interact with them that way. Because even though I can hear and talk, it doesn't mean that's how it should be all the way. I'm still deaf. I still have a lot of deaf friends in my circle. and. I, if they want to get to know me plus my friends, they need to learn sign language. And that's the key for me when it comes to dating a hearing guy. But generally speaking, it does not matter. I just like humans. <laughs> and I want someone who has motivation and goals and has a job. <laughs> it's about matching personalities and somebody that you get along with, not their identity, whether they're hearing or deaf. 
And it's interesting because I come from a strong deaf family and I have deaf friends in the deaf community. And oftentimes I have some of them that will come up to me and say, Carly, I think it's best for you to date a deaf guy. And I'm like, okay, I understand their perspective. The communication access is already established within that relationship. If I date a deaf guy, I get that. But who are you to tell me that I should date a deaf guy, end of story, and not even give a hearing guy a chance? You know, one thing that I always keep in mind is that communication could be a problem. And communication is key in a relationship. And so I always give the hearing guy enough respect to open up that dialogue from the get-go just to make sure that he understands what he's putting himself into and if he wants to continue this relationship. I notice that some take it really well and they are still willing to learn ASL. And, you know, we interact and realize, you may realize, you know what, it's not going to work out. And we go our separate ways. And some handle it kind of harshly towards me. And for me to give you enough respect to open up that conversation and to let you know that there's going to be a lot of work in this and not just for you to learn a new language and think that it's cool to you dive into this community. But if you and I want to build a strong relationship and you want me to be part of your family and your friends, this means that they have to learn something which too. And that takes a lot of work, which I'm aware of. And so I like to give them that heads up and have that conversation. So instead of giving me enough respect and saying, hey, you know what? This is going to be too much for me. And I, I don't see this going anywhere. And then leave it at that. They used to give me mixed messages and saying, oh, I'm not ready for dating life, or I just don't know how to play the dating game, whatever, and then disappear. And then two weeks later, they're dating somebody else who is hearing. And so that really destroys my confidence for a little bit because I realize, oh, well, whatever they needed, I couldn't provide. And now I see you progressing with this other girl, but I gave you enough respect. So why couldn't you respect me enough as an actual human being and talk to me instead of giving me vague messages and then just leaving. So from there, I have to rebuild my confidence and remember what my value is and what I have to give and realize, you know what? If that's how you handle that situation, then honey, I don't even want you in my life anyways. So <laughs> thanks for giving me that lesson and thanks for doing me a favor. So overall, I just, I always have that knowledge. If I date a hearing guy, it's going to take a unique hearing individual to make this work. Yeah. And just like you said, we know that there's good guys out there. And it wasn't until you talked about your sister and her husband that it hit me that there are people, hearing people with no prior knowledge of deaf community or ASL who will be willing to learn and work and learn sign language for love and build that relationship. So my sister is actually hearing and she met her husband in college. And so in college, this is where you party your butt off and the time frame's not enough. But during that time, my sister's husband dated my sister and really liked my sister. And my sister finally said, Hey, my whole family's deaf and you're going to have to learn sign language too, because let's be honest, if you marry me, you're not only marrying me, you're marrying my family. And so after that, next thing I knew, he learned sign language and I'm actually really close to him. And I, I truly view him as my brother. And we have full interactions and conversations with each other. And so it takes a really unique guy who understands the value of learning sign language to actually be a part of a community and have that wonderful connection and relationship with deaf people in general. Yeah, exactly. And that makes everything so knowing that there's someone out there for us who will learn and do the work and be open minded and laugh with us and have that kind of dialogue and connection. And that's and not settling for someone less than that. Everything happens for a reason. I truly believe that. So all experience that we've had, the good, the bad, the ugly, really made us learn and grow as human beings, as women, and to know what I want out of a relationship. And to know our worth. To know our worth, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was another question. Oh, yeah. Um, this one's from Eric from Texas. He asked, when you're dating a hearing guy with no knowledge of ASL or deaf people, how do you guys interact with each other on the first date or just dating in general? It depends on where I met the guy 
or how I met him. If it's online dating, like Tinder or whatever, typically if I have notified them ahead of time, they'll say, oh, okay, you know, and they'll prepare themselves. They might do a little bit of research on some signs or they might bring a notepad and pen like your date did. Or we'll communicate through our phones. You know, I'll show him some gestures or some signs. Our first date typically is based off of that, learning gestures and signs. If I've already met them and he has a little bit of prior knowledge and capabilities of gesturing or signing, but usually it's it's texting and gesturing. One thing that I always constantly remind them of is if you're going to date me, I'm not going to be your teacher. I, I acknowledge that you're going to have to learn a new language, which is going to take a lot of your time. However, it's not my job to teach you sign language. I want to be present as Carly instead of sitting there and, you know, hey, let's teach you a lesson. This is this and this is that. Yeah, instead of learning about you and your journey. Right. And you're teaching in ASL instead. I'm not a teacher and I can help you, quote unquote, study and have some fun. Have some fun. Yeah. Right. Right. But legitimately teaching like some people take that and say wow like that's really mean you you're not even willing to teach me and it's like i mean you have to understand from my perspective there are people out there who this is their career they teach asl so let's give them the credit for the job that they do and take classes under them yeah exactly for me i do with hearing guys i tend to talk and sometimes it's hard and i have to remind them that i am deaf and i still don't understand everything fully and some of the guys will be like, oh, okay, and they'll make sure I understand everything. But then you have some guys who just forget and will move on and those relationships never last. So I interact with guys by talking, but still they have to learn sign language and they can ask me some words, like one word or two, but just like you said, it's not my responsibility to teach you. I know my worth of knowing who we are, our amazing journey. I want them to know about that and not about me teaching them a language. Yep. And I, I just have to share one of my favorite stories about how my sister's husband learned sign language. And it started with, you know, he was learning signs here and there and he was picking it up on his own. And one day, one weekend, my sister said, hey, so do you want to go on a camping trip with our family? And he was like, sure, absolutely. Like, I would love to go. So my sister, in fact, had to work. And so she actually wasn't going to be there the whole trip. And so he would actually be the only one with the entire family who, again, is deaf. And so he got there and was like, um, where's Jenny? And we're like, oh, she's actually working. She's not coming until later. And he was like, oh, okay. I mean, he's already there, so he can't back out now. I mean, if you back out, you're going to look bad. So he was good and he took advantage of it. And honestly, after that trip, he can sign really well. So Oftentimes people ask, Hey, what's the best way to sign? And I say, you know what? You got to get out of your comfort zone and just dive right in with a group of deaf people. They will just sign with you and you'll pick it up really easily. I love that story. It's so good. So really bottom line, I think, I think our dating life is pretty similar to any girl in her late twenties living in a big city. We go through a lot of different types of people and their soul, their spirits, and we learn so much from it. And they learn a lot too. The stories we have, my God, <laughs> too many. Right. And my parents, for example, I mean, they've been married for over 35 years and their love is just goals for me. The way that my dad is with my mom and my mom still gets butterflies in her stomach when my dad gets home after 35 years and they still have that. And so that's, that's something that I'm looking for. It doesn't matter if you're hearing or if you're deaf, no, you're a guy that is excited to come home to me. You have the same passions and goals to do life with me. That's the most important thing. Yeah. That and communication. I learned from my parents and their marriage. Oh, I'll never forget the story my parents told me when my dad proposed to my mom. Oh, it's forever stuck in my head. And when my dad proposed to my mom, my mom directly told him and said, I don't cook and I don't clean. If you want to marry me, I don't clean and I don't cook. And my dad's like, okay, fine. I will do the cooking. And if we make enough money, we'll hire a housekeeper. And they've been married for over 30 years. <laughs> so communication is key. Communicate. <laughs> I'm going to take some notes here. <laughs> take notes. I mean, I still love cooking, but cleaning, we'll talk about that. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I think that answers all the questions for us now. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It was very lighthearted and fun. Yeah, and I hope you learned something from us. If you want to follow us on Instagram, it's at what the deaf. And don't forget to email us if you have any questions. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Next week. Bye. Bye, guys.